I still remember the time one of my female clients told me she was thinking about murdering her husband. She was joking, or so she said, but she had this fantasy a couple of times. He was talking and talking and talking and lecturing her and barking at her and yelling at her and she was standing there silently and she just pictured herself picking up a vase and beating him over the head with it until he couldn't talk anymore. And she'd had this fantasy a number of times. It was really bothering her that she kept having this fantasy, but she would joke about it and say, yeah, you know, I thought about it, but I would never do something like that. And the fact that she was having that fantasy over and over and over was a gigantic clue to me that she was in an unhappy marriage because people who really feel that badly are not in a good marriage. Now this may sound like duh, of course, but you would be shocked how many people miss gigantic glaring red signs that they are in a deeply, deeply unhappy relationship and may need to get out or desperately need to make changes. I work with people all the time who don't actually stop and think about how bad their relationship is because they aren't willing to deal with the feelings that are gonna come from that. So if you are wondering if you're in an unhappy marriage, if you're trying to be honest with yourself but struggling to do so, today I wanna to talk to you about exactly what it looks like to be in an unhappy relationship so that you can see if it's you or if it's somebody that you care about. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I'm gonna be talking to you today about how unhappy marriages and how to fix them or if it's time to get out. Now I've got a number of resources to share with you here today and any of them that I share are available on my website at adamlanesmith.com. I will also link some throughout the video and I'll have some down in the description below so that you can get connected. If you wanna ask me questions, drop me a comment, please, by all means. If you need to clarify, Adam, is this really an unhappy marriage? Adam, is mine an unhappy marriage? I am so used to fielding those questions. It's not even funny. Drop me that comment while you're there. Like, comment, subscribe, do everything to support the channel, but keep coming back. Because if you're here watching this video, I've got a ton of other videos you're gonna to need to watch too. So some clear signs that you are in an unhappy marriage that you probably don't know that you are in. And maybe not even a marriage, maybe an unhappy relationship. I was just at a TikTok live stream just the other day and I had somebody pop in and say, you know, I'm not sure what to do because my boyfriend is always mad at me. And when I'm sad, he gets mad at me for being sad too. Am I doing something wrong? What is going on? It seems like he's trying because he does things to make me happy sometimes. He just gets really mad when I'm still sad about something else he did that hurt. And I said, have you ever stopped to think about the fact that he's just managing your feelings instead of actually meeting where, you, where you're at and saying, what can we do to relieve your sadness? If you're sad right now or hurt by something I did, let's not just cover it up by me giving you flowers or chocolates or calling you and giving you attention. What do we need to do to fix that sadness? Most women are so used to feeling sad and being mistreated in their relationships that they don't stop to question the intent of the other person. And men do this too with women who are mistreating them. If you struggle to believe that you deserve to be loved, you will really think the other person's working in good faith with you when instead they're just managing you through feelings. So one big piece you need to be aware of in an unhappy marriage is your feelings are being managed by the other person. This can be the carrot or the stick. Either they're managing you through good feelings and telling you, hey, don't worry about it. Here's a gift. Here's some chocolates. Here's some flowers. Every time I do something wrong, I buy you something. If that's what they're doing, they're managing you through good feelings. If they then flip around and punish you for having bad feelings and make you feel worse about yourself, they are managing you through bad feelings as well, the carrot and the stick. This usually comes from something called avoidant attachment style and not just the regular night nervous type, the manipulative avoidant type. Now, the belief with avoidant attachment style is that nobody else on earth is ever going to act in good faith with them and nobody is trustworthy because everyone will default to selfishness. So number two, big sign that most people don't realize if they're in an unhappy marriage, are you being treated as though you are going to commit a crime when you never have? A crime against the relationship, a crime against the person. Are you constantly, endlessly being looked at with suspicion as if you are one step away from grabbing every dollar out of the cash register and stuff in your pockets, so to speak? Is that your relationship where you are always being accused of cheating? You are always being accused of flirting more than you meant to. You are always being accused of these things that you are going to do and the other person has to endlessly manage you to prevent you from doing it. Now, point number three, this comes from my attachment bootcamp video course. Point number three is 
what is your sex life like inside your marriage? So inside my attachment bootcamp course in modules 10 and 11, I walk people through the male and female sex drives and how they can get broken if you have attachment issues. The male sex drive can break with attachment issues in a couple of ways. One is with a massive pornography addiction where they fixate then once they're with you in the bedroom, they fixate on body, especially specific body areas if you get what I'm saying and specific actions. They fetishize these two specific things, and so they almost forget that you're even in the room. If sex is feeling mechanical and hyper-focused like that, that's usually a secret pornography addiction. I have so many couples come into my private coaching or so many men into my private coaching and admit they have a secret pornography problem they've never told their wife about and they're 10 years into their marriage. This is a gigantic problem, and that sex can be very bad, and it shows underneath that the, the relationship is not as good as it could be. An unhappy marriage is one that usually has pretty bad, unfulfilling sex for one or both parties. Now, the female sex drive is a great litmus test for the health of the relationship. So what does the female partner's sex drive look like? If it is completely at zero and running on fumes and mechanical, and she has to close her eyes and think of England to do her duty, then that is a massive red flag that you are secretly in an unhappy marriage with very low emotional intimacy. This can come about because you have attachment issues, or it can come about because neither one of you has ever experienced real love and affection from your parents and your childhood, so you grew up without much of it and now you have very little of it in your adult life this is a sign that you're in an unhappy marriage this is not how it's meant to be it doesn't you don't have to be swinging from the rafters eight times a week to be in a good marriage but you know once a week twice a week three times a week these are good more normal signs for the average couple who's in a happy relationship once a month or like 15 percent of couples out there who haven't had sex in the last six months married couples yes ouch that right there is a great indicator that it's a bad unhappy marriage it doesn't have to be a brutally oppressive marriage it can just be an unhappy one so male sex drive female sex drive keep track of both of those and if you want more information you can check out my attachment boot camp course i'm going to link that below in the video description so that you can grab that if you need it so how do you fix an unhappy marriage well, that just happens to be my specialty. I was a marriage family therapist for years, and now I coach couples and individuals through fixing their relationships to build better connections. So let's take those points and let's build back from them. So number one, if a person is managing your feelings, this means that that person doesn't actually know how to connect with you and cooperate as a team. That person probably has avoidant attachment style and believes that they're not going to be able to work with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, so they're not going to be able to connect with you. They might have anxious attachment style where they're managing your feelings through doing nice things for you, hoping secretly you'll do nice things for them. But if they are not working with you openly and saying, hey, look, here's what we're dealing with. You're sad. Let's manage those feelings. Let's, let's feel those feelings. Let's deal with them and let's solve them as a couple. If you have feelings, they need a response. Pain needs to be responded to. Feelings are information that something is off. So if you're sad, they shouldn't be yelling at you until you stop being sad. That's like that saying, the beatings will continue until morale improves. If that's your relationship, you need to stop and find out if the other person is willing to take a different approach and say, look, can we cooperate like adults and find a solution together as a couple. This is something I teach all the time in my coaching practice of stopping and saying, we need to solve this. This is a real problem. Let's work on this as a team. Now, gaslighting can come in and make it impossible to solve this problem. So by facing this problem head on, you will discover if your marriage is salvageable or not. This is a gigantic indicator of if the relationship will even work. An unhappy marriage sometimes leads to a happy divorce as you get away from that other human being who is mistreating you and abusing you. Next comes the person who's wildly paranoid about you all the time and thinks you are one step away from hurting them or betraying them or abandoning them. That's, that can be sometimes the answer too. Building expectations of what would happen and when. When would you guys break up? What would actually make you break up? What are your needs? What are the top three things each one of you needs in a relationship to feel love and loved and fulfilled and cared for? What are those things? Does one of you need time to pull away sometimes? I don't mean break up and, and take time away as a couple and sleep with other people, but to spend some time daily away from each other. What does it look like to get two hours alone out in your garage, you know, puttering around and having some fun out there or, or in, your, in your den or wherever it is? What would it look like to get some time? Are you able to stop and ask each other that? Are you able to be truthful with each other about your needs and especially maybe your sexual needs? Micro cheating and dopamine binging like that is usually down to never being able to ask for your needs to get met and being terrified that if you try, the other person will actually be angry and resentful that you have needs. Can you guys talk about that openly? 
If you need help with that, get some professional assistance. If you need a session with me or some coaching or guidance through that, let me know. I'll drop the link for that down below in the description as well. And finally, when it comes to sex, are you making sure that your sexual experience is unitive? So I have lots of videos here on this channel about how to make sex better and how it should deepen your relationship. But when does sex start? It should start early in the morning when you wake up. And I don't mean you necessarily have to climb on top of each other, although you totally can. And I do recommend that for couples. But what I mean is it should start with holding hands. It should start with a laugh. It should start with saying good morning. It should start with asking about what's your day going to be like today. It should start with walking up behind the other person in the kitchen and giving them a hug or a quick grope or a slap on the butt. It should work into that. It should be a kiss on the neck here and there. It should be warm, caring, nurturing intimacy, emotional intimacy and non-sexual physical intimacy that leads into great oxytocin boosting and makes you actually feel close to each other. That can turn around and build into good physical contact like massages. Get to invest in a little bottle of massage oil and a towel that you throw down and you strip down and you rub the other person's back with some with some oil. I almost guarantee this is going to lead to a better sexual experience for the two of you and it's definitely get the get the engines warmed up a little bit. But when is the last time if you're a married couple or a long-term couple, when's the last time you made out with your partner? When was the last time you sat on the couch for 15, 20 minutes with a movie playing in the background and made out with your partner like a couple of teenagers? When was that? You need to do that. Couples need to be making out more and groping each other a lot more and having intercourse a little bit less because that, if you balance that out correctly and have good foreplay, good connection and good contact together, the intercourse gets a lot better and longer and more unitive. And unitive means it bonds you together as you have the experience. Every time you have sex should bring you closer as a couple. It shouldn't be just rubbing one out and being done and okay, we're done with a quickie. And every time is a quickie and it's just one quickie a week. That's not how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be the physical and emotional intimacy in the relationship leads to sexual intimacy. That is the process. So if that sounds foreign to you and a little bit unusual, I'd be happy to help. Again, sign up for a coaching session or check out my attachment bootcamp course. I've got two full modules inside. They're about male and female sex drives and how to tune them up so that they are humming along just fine. What I want you to take away from this is this. Unhappy marriages often will blindside you. You might delay yourself or delude yourself or just not allow yourself to see what is really in front of you because you're hoping to fix it or you're hoping that it won't get so bad that it blows up and you're just trying to hold it together with spit and string. And if that's the case, you need to stop and be honest with yourself about where you're at. Enabling your partner to act the way that they are or enabling yourself to act the way that you are is going to prevent your marriage from getting better and is going to lead you, unfortunately, toward a catastrophic divorce. I've seen some nightmarish divorces that you don't even want to get near. You need to avoid that by following these three pieces that I have laid out for you here in this video. And again, if you need help, contact me. Drop me a comment that says, Adam, help, and I will get in contact with you. It's not a big deal. I'd love to help you if you need it. So at this point, you've got questions right? Drop me some questions down in the comments below. Adam, what do I do when my partner blank? Adam, what do I do when they gaslight me? What do I do when they say this? I've tried asking this. Here's what they said. What do I do about that? Drop me your biggest burning questions down in the comments section. Let's talk. I want to walk you through solving some of those problems and get you back on track to a good marriage. I want to show you what that's supposed to look like. So I recommend next that you check out this video right here. It shows you what a secure relationship is supposed to look like. If you can see the difference between those two things, Things, what you are experiencing and what you should experience, then you can finally have something to aim for and build an amazing relationship. Thank you for following along. Drop me a comment, like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next video.